welcome back. This is week three of our series, Stress and Worry. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about something that could be exciting, yet sometimes stressful, and that's the future. I want you guys to turn it to somebody next to you and tell them what comes to mind when you think of the future. So when I thought of the future as a middle schooler, I thought I'd be this awesome NBA referee, NFL referee, a Major League Baseball umpire, because I thought those guys were cool. Um, but now that I've grown up, I don't think I ever really wanted to be one of those. So thinking about the future is fun and exciting, but it can feel like a lot sometimes too. There are things that we may worry about, maybe not things like zombies, alien invasions from outer space, or it may be more like, what class am I gonna take next? Or will I ever be taller than my mom? Or will there ever be a need for the guardians of the galaxy? I don't know, but that would be pretty cool. But here's one thing that we do know about the future. It's unknown and no one knows what the future is gonna look like. If you could step into a time machine and peek into the future, what would you wonder about? Go ahead and turn to the person next to you and tell them. I think it's safe to say that we all want to know more about the future. And that's because while the future can be exciting, it can also cause some stress. For some of us, there might be a big thing that makes it difficult to be excited about the future. There are things that you hope will be different than they are right now. Maybe your home life isn't that great and you worry that it'll never get better. Maybe you don't have a lot of friends and you're afraid that you'll never find people who accept and understand you. Maybe you learn differently than others and you wonder if that'll ever get any easier. Whatever it is, you're nervous about the future because you're worried it won't bring the change you want to see. For others, it's the exact opposite. Maybe your stress isn't about the future and the scariness. Maybe you don't want things to change. You love the way that your life looks right now. You're happy with how your family and your friends and your school team looks. When you think about the future, you're stressed that things won't always be the way that they are now. Here's the thing. Every day we get to enjoy this thing called life and wake up just a tiny bit older. Anyone else count down their days until their birthday? In case you wanted to know, mine is 165 days until my birthday. The future is coming and it's going to be filled with things that are really good. The future will also have some really difficult things coming our way too. I don't know about you, but to me, that can be stressful sometimes. So how are we supposed to face a future that we have no control over? How do we stay stress-free right now when we have no idea what the future is going to look like? There's an incredible experience recorded in the Bible that I think can help us. So a couple of guys were in a situation where they had zero control over what was going to happen next. I think that we can learn a lot by watching the way that they handled the stress that an uncertain future brought on. The two guys I'm talking about are Paul and Silas. They dedicated their lives to traveling from city to city sharing the good news about Jesus. Their journey is recorded in the New Testament in a book called Acts. During their ministry, Paul and Silas met a girl who was making money for people by telling fortunes. This wasn't from God, so Paul and Silas prayed in Jesus' name to set her free. While well, the people who were depending on her to make the money were so mad that they stripped and beat Silas and Paul and threw them in prison. Now, this wasn't any old prison. The jailer put Paul and Silas in the innermost cell with their feet chained. A guard stood watched over them at night so that they couldn't try to escape. That definitely feels like a lot. In that super stressful situation, what did Paul and Silas do? Well, let's find out. In Acts 16, 25, it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Even if you're not sure about this whole God stuff, I think for all of us, we'd be sending up some sort of prayer in desperation. God, would you just get me out of this mess? Sound familiar? Well, I'm sure we've all prayed a few prayers like that in stressful situations. I think Paul and Silas were praying some different kinds of prayers. They're surrounded more like a prayer of hope. How do I know? Well, let's finish reading what the verse says. So about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. These guys were full on singing while they were in prison. They were chained up, they were beaten, and the future looked anything but up. 
There was so much unknown. How long were they going to be there? Would they ever be released? Were they going to get beat again tomorrow? In the middle of facing a super stressful moment and an uncertain future, they chose joy. They chose prayer. I think there's an important lesson in that for us. You can choose joy over worry. Paul and Silas had little control over their current circumstances and even less control over their futures. Instead of choosing stress and fear and hopelessness, they faithfully followed Jesus and chose joy. They chose to turn to God when they trusted their present and their future. If this were the end of the story, it would be good enough. But right in the middle of Paul and Silas's worship set, something crazy happened. Let's look. So suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Great news for the prisoners, but bad news for the guard who was now worried about his own future. If all the prisoners escaped, he would certainly be put to death. He was so worried about what might happen to him that he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. So let's read what happens next. But Paul shouted him, stop, don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights and ran into the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Wait, what? The guard who was watching over Paul and Silas in prison suddenly felt completely different. He was so amazed by the way that Paul and Silas responded to their uncertain future that the guard put his faith in Jesus right then and there. And that's the other lesson that we learned from Paul and Silas. Every day when you choose joy over worry, you never know who else's future you might change. I know this doesn't take the question about your future away immediately, but I do think it can help us navigate the stress we feel in any unknown circumstances. It can help us remember that every day we can choose joy over worry. So how can you choose joy when you're feeling stressed and worried? Well, here's where I would start. First, identify what you're worried about. When I say choose joy, I don't mean put a pretend smile on and fake that you're fine when you're not. That doesn't help any of us. It's important to identify what it is you're worried about. Be honest about what's stressing you out. Identify it to yourself, to someone you trust, and to God. Then we have to remember what God can do. Paul and Silas has experienced God's faithfulness, goodness, and love many times up to this point. So when their backs were literally up against a wall, they were left wondering if God would provide or if God cared or how God might be faithful to them. Instead, they could remember the ways that they'd seen God show up in the past and have hope that God would do the same in the future. That's what I want you to do. When you're worried about what's ahead or stressed about the unknown, look back. Remember how God has been faithful to you in the past to help you choose joy both today and in the future. Finally, be grateful. One of the best things you can do when you're worried practice gratitude. Look for things to be thankful for even in the middle of your stress and worry. Big or small, the more things you can think of to be thankful for now, the more joy you'll see show in the results. Remember, choosing joy isn't a quick fix. I'm not asking you to pretend you're okay when you're not. I get that sometimes choosing joy doesn't feel possible. When that happens, it's important to know that you may need help. Talking to an adult that you trust can be a great first step, especially when stress and worry might be something more like depression and anxiety that doesn't just go away. Now think back to Paul and Silas. Remember what they did when they were in a really difficult situation? They chose to worship and pray. I am personally a lot like Paul and Silas. When I'm stuck in a stressful situation or something's going wrong, I always have a, just a worship song in general that's always stuck in my head and I just think over and over again. That is just a practical way that you can choose joy. Remember, you can choose joy over worry. And as you head into your groups, I want you to think about this question. What's one way you can choose joy this week? You guys are going to discuss the question in your groups, and I hope you all have a great week, and I will see you all next week.